Today we start hitting one of the most important topics in calculus, which is the concept of a derivative. And we've already talked yesterday about a secant line, okay, which is going to be important as we look at things today. We've also reviewed concepts like slope, change in y over change in x, which we said is like the average rate of change, change in distance over change in time. Okay? So, let's uh, start by considering uh, f of x equals x cubed minus x. Okay? And we spent yesterday learning about the average rate of change, right? If I wanted to find the average rate of change over the interval 1 to 3. Well, we said yesterday that the average rate of change, which we could call a rate, which we could also call the slope of the secant line, okay, would be like the change in distance over the change in time. And we said that we're going to call distance the y-axis and time the x-axis. Okay. So this is basically this problem, f of 3 minus f of 1 all over 3 minus 1. Okay. So f of 3, that's going to be 3 cubed minus 3, that's going to be 24, minus 1 cubed minus 1, that's going to be 0, all over 2. The average rate of change is 12. We actually looked at this problem a little bit yesterday. Okay. And we also said that that could be a slope of the secant line. Okay. So whatever this cubic function does, we said that we could use that to find the slope of the secant line okay, through those two points. And that's basically what this 12 is. It's the slope of the secant line that goes through these two points. You know, one of them at 1 and the other one at 3. Okay, so <clears throat> let's uh, kind of dive a little bit deeper now. This only gives me the slope of a secant line, and it only gives me an average rate of change. But what if, and this is the principal question that we deal with when we talk about derivatives, what if I wanted to know what the rate of change was at exactly that point, at a given instant, which we will call the instantaneous rate of change. And we're going, you're going to see that phrase, those four words, over and over and over again. The instantaneous rate of change. How fast is a function changing at a given instant instead of looking at over an interval? And let's kind of dive into that a little bit. Let's find the slope of the parabola f of x equals x squared at the point 2, 4. Okay. 
And so this is going to be our first kind of dive into it. We want to leave uh, some space here. This is probably going to take me a couple pages to work through it, and I'm going to work slow because this is an important concept for us to look at. Of course, I have a parabola. Actually, it comes down here and touches, of course, at the origin. There's my parabola. And we're wanting to know, well, what's happening right at 2, 4? Okay. How fast is it changing right here at this instant, 2, 4? Okay. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to look at a secant line. We're going to come over to the right a little bit, h units. Let's say that I come over h units, which would make this unit 2 plus h. Okay. So everybody understands that I went h units to the right. Okay, so if I don't know what that is, then I just say that's 2 plus h. Now, if this is 2 plus h, what is this point up here? Isn't it f of 2 plus h? Right? Isn't that the y coordinate? Or in other words, I could label the ordered pair as 2 plus h and f of 2 plus h. Okay? And let's kind of give that little secant line that we're working with. I think in your homework we started working using like q and p. So we'll call that the secant. If I were to draw a line through those two, and I know there's usually a greater curve than this, okay, that would be the secant line QP. All right. Now, let's, uh, let's work with that. Okay, if I wanted to find the slope of secant line QP, If I wanted to find the slope of secant QP, well, we know the song. Slope is delta y over delta x. Change in y over change in x, or the change in the function values all over the change in the x values. So I'm going to have f of 2 plus h minus f of 2. That's going to be what's on top. That's the change in the y's. The change in the x's is going to be 2 plus h minus 2. Okay, because here is one x value and there is the other x value. Okay, that's my change in my x's. Everybody with me so far? So let's, now we kind of have to come over to the side someplace and remember that my function was x squared. So if I'm going to find f of 2 plus h, then I'm going to plug a 2 plus h in for x and square it. I need to do FOIL here. So that would be 4 plus 4H plus H squared. I'm going to put that right there. So I will have 4 plus 4H plus H squared minus the value of the function at 2, which we know F of 2 is going to be 4. all over this denominator, which I think will simplify, won't it? The twos will go away, so I just have an h. All right. Now, if we look at the top, look at my numerator, the fours will go away. And 
and now I have 4h plus h squared all over h. That will simplify. I hear some of you saying that. I can take an h out of the top. h times 4 plus h all over h. Get out the slasher. And I have this h plus 4. What is that? That is the slope of the secant line. Okay? The slope of secant QP, we just said, based on those circumstances, is h plus 4. Now, you remember that whole unit that we just finished on limits? And this is where we actually find out how to discover the rate of change at a given instant. Let's go back to my drawing. If I let, let me get a totally different color. We said that this distance in here was h. If I close that distance down, make, keep making it shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter, what happens to my secant line? If I keep bringing this distance, if I keep closing this distance h down, then the secant line keeps getting shorter, doesn't it? Okay. And if I keep bringing it closer and closer, eventually I get a very good approximation of what the slope is right at that instant. Okay? And so what we do to finish this problem is I take the limit as h approaches 0, remember I said we're making the h get smaller and smaller? So we're going to close the h down smaller and smaller of this h plus 4. So this is a very easy limit for us to calculate. We can substitute 0 plus 4 is 4. What is that? That is the, the instantaneous rate of change. We're going to call it several things. It's the instantaneous rate of change of f of x equals x squared, okay, when x equals 2. How fast is it changing at that given instant? Now, but remember, weren't we using a slope? <clears throat> so in reality, what we did was we calculated the slope of the tangent line. We've been talking about a secant line, but if I keep close, remember we talked about 2 plus h, and if I keep closing this thing down, I eventually, and if I let it go infinitesimally close to zero, what I get is a very accurate estimation of the slope of the tangent line. to my function, okay? And we, of course in this case we looked at it when x was 2. So we can find out how fast a function is changing at a given instant using a limit. And this leads us to an incredible piece of information. The definition of derivative.
The definition of derivative says that if I calculate the limit as h approaches zero of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h, that I can calculate that instantaneous rate of change, the slope of the tangent line. And there is a new piece of uh, symbology I guess I need to show you. We call this derivative, this is actually called the derivative. And we give it this symbol, f, and that is called a prime, f prime of x is called the derivative of the function. And when we talk about the derivative, we're talking about all those things we just said, the slope of the tangent line. Okay. The slope of the tangent line to a function at a given point. Okay. But it is very, 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 very important that you understand this long form of the definition of derivative. And you need to understand it. Remember, we talked about verbally nagging, okay? We need to understand it graphically as well as anything else. If I've got a function, whatever that function is, this is saying nothing more than delta y over delta x, okay? It's saying that I've got this x, I've got this x plus h, right? And so if I'm finding my change in y's, okay, this y up here is f of x plus h, this y is f of x, okay, so there's my numerator of the definition of derivative. The denominator is the change in x's, right? Well, look at the change in these two. What's x plus h minus x? Isn't it h? So this, this whole deal up here, you probably should make a note somewhere that this is nothing more than delta y over delta x. It's nothing more than the change in y's over the change in x's, which we did yesterday. The change in distance over the change in time. The great big difference between what we did yesterday and what we did today is the fact that we're taking the limit of this as h approaches zero. That's the huge difference between what we did yesterday and what we're doing today. And so you're going to be given a problem like this Use the definition of derivative to calculate the derivative of f of x equals x squared then use that derivative to find the slope of the tangent line I know this is long but it's important of the tangent line 2 f of x Uh, let's just say at x equals 2. Okay? So when we do this, we are going to start with our definition of derivative. We are going to say that the derivative f prime of x is equal to the limit as h approaches 0.
of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. And most of what this entails right now is algebra, okay? Is being able to use FOIL correctly and simplify and factor correctly. So I know that my function is x squared. So that means to do this problem, I am going to need to find f of x plus h, which will be x plus h, the quantity squared. And we will continue this problem on Monday.